Hello. How is everyone today? Good. Welcome to the Black Box Theater. My name is Jen Matthews. I'm the artistic director here. It is my great pleasure to welcome you into my home, literally my home, and also to welcome you to tonight's concert. This is our symphonic choir, and they will be performing a tribute to Burt Bacharach. Yeah? Yeah. Sounds exciting. Uh, I want to start off by acknowledging the land that we are on. Edmonds College occupies the uh, tribal lands of the Coast Salish peoples, specifically the Stahopes Nation. And we are, uh, we acknowledge that this is their land, that this is, um, that they fought for and that we have stolen from them and that we now occupy it. So with that acknowledgement, uh, acknowledgements are just words unless they are followed by action. So I do invite you to take uh, take a look on, online at the various activities that are happening this summer from our tribal nations. Specifically, there is a powwow happening in, um, as part of Seafair in July, July 21st and through 23rd. So take a look at one of those, at the powwow event and the different things that you can go to to support, those tri uh, to support our tribes and our tribal nations. Uh, a couple things to point out about our facility. Emergency exits are located in all four corners of the room. If we need to evacuate from any reason, I will hop up and scream and yell a bunch of things that we need to do, and then we'll do those things. Uh, if we do have to evacuate, leave your chairs because they're not gonna float, they're super heavy. <laughs> so they will not save your life. Uh, your phones, those devices, pop those out. Let's take a look at those beautiful phones you have. Once they're out, check in at the Black Box Theater. Go to Facebook, check in that you're at the Symphonic Choir or whatever your social media is, hashtag Edmonds College. And then make sure it's in silent mode so it doesn't go off in the middle of the concert. Uh, if you happen to take a picture, great, no flash. Uh, but please share those with us at hashtag Edmonds College. Restrooms are located in the lobby across the hall from this theater. If you need to leave, awesome. Just wait to come back in between songs after you hear some applause and use that time to get in or out. Uh, concessions will be available throughout the evening. This is Sarah, our concessions person. Uh, at the end of the night, Sarah will also be collecting donations. So if you wish to donate to music scholarships and music work that's being done in this theater and on our campus, Sarah will be collecting those at the end of the night. So we can put those towards scholarships and get some of these students some better funds for some better resources and all that kind of fun stuff. On to do what you do. I think that's all the things I need to say. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us tonight and please welcome the Symphonic Choir under the direction of Kirk Marcy. Good evening and thank you for joining us for our spring concert. It was just a year ago tonight that I was, uh, well, let's just say I was on day two of COVID and didn't get to be at my own concert. So I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> and I'm glad you're here. And I'm certainly glad that these people are here because they're dear friends and we look forward to sharing some music of Burt Bacharach. Now, some of you, if you are within a few years of my age, on either side, by the way, <laughs> we would probably attest that Burt Bacharach is the soundtrack of our youth. Right? Yep. Um, along with his lyricist Hal David, who was his primary go-to lyricist, they penned hundreds of, of songs, love songs, uh, songs about life, many of whom won Grammy Awards and were certainly more Grammy-nominated ones than that. 
Burt Bacharach was hailed uh, in recent years by a, a critic from the New York Times as being the 1960s and 70s Cole Porter. If you're familiar with Cole Porter, who, who penned so much of the music of the great American songbook, most of it in the 30s and 40s. Burt Bacharach was that uh, in the 60s and 70s. So we're going to present some of his music this evening. I wish we could present it all, but I didn't bring a waffle iron to feed you breakfast in the morning. <laughs> That's how much there is. We're going to begin with, with a piece called Promises, Promises. This was from a Broadway musical based upon the 1960 film The Apartment, a story of a junior executive in an insurance company that was trying to climb the corporate ladder by allowing his apartment to be used by his superiors for their extramarital affairs. The musical premiered on Broadway in 1968. David wrote this song for the 1966 film by the name of Alfie. Film starred Michael Caine and Shelley Winters. Many of the students know who Michael Caine is from. Cars 2. <laughs> Cars 2, yes. <laughs> right. Over the years, many singers have recorded the song Alfie, including Dionne Warwick, more about her in a bit, Stevie Wonder and Barbara Streisand. Tonight we're going to feature Kirsten and Faye on the, uh, on the duet and the solos on Alfie.
your hand, the carpenters. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't alone. <laughs> Although the song Close to You was written actually in 1963, it remained on the B-side of several different albums. Those are record albums, you youngsters. <laughs> Uh, until about 1969, when brother and sister team Karen and Richard Carpenter recorded it for A&M Records. Um, that became uh, their lunch ticket. That was the first of their many, many hit songs um, recorded on the A&M label. So, here we go.
next up, one of my favorite background pieces. I say a little prayer for you. Written in 1967, this song became the first of many hit recordings of Backrack and David Toombs by Dion Warwick. Interestingly enough, I, I, I've had so much fun kind of doing the deep dive into, into Backrack's writing and some of the behind the scenes stories. Shortly after the release of Dion Warwick's recording of, of this song, uh, Aretha Franklin recorded the very same song. By his own admission, Backrack felt as though the song was a bit too fast on the Dionne Warwick recording, but it took to audiences. He got overruled by producers. So tonight we're going to feature the treble singers in our group doing I Say a Little Prayer for you. talking about the Carpenters recording for A&M Records. Herb Alpert, the A in Alpert and Moss Records. How many of you remember Herb Alpert as being the trumpet player with the Tijuana Brass? Oh yeah. yeah. This Guy's In Love With You was the very first song released with Herb Alpert singing. Never really thought of himself as a singer. Apparently he did a video, all right, movie, <laughs> that there was one song that he recorded as a singer, it happened to be this song, on the beach in Santa Monica. And people saw it 
as kind of an incidental thing on the movie until they heard his voice, and then all of a sudden, the phones at CBS <laughs> started ringing off the uh, off the wall. They wanted that song to be recorded, and the rest is history. So tonight, our tenors and basses are going to do a um, a rather cool arrangement of this song. It's uh, it's done in barbershop style. saying in high school that I know. The fact that I can even remember back that far is <laughs> pretty miraculous. Bert Bacharach considered a house is not a home to be one of his greatest efforts. Now when you've written as many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs as he did, how do you pick your favorite? This was it. It was released in 1964 as the theme song for a movie of the same name, starring Shelley Winters, same actress that was in Alfie. She starred as a New York City brothel keeper. These themes. You know. <laughs> the show did not survive, but the song did, thankfully. Tonight we're going to feature Dylan Bauer as our soloist. A house is not a home.
Even when there's nothing there but glue. dedicated to the survivors of school violence. Bacharach, even at the age of 90, continued to write music for a cause. To quote him, he said, it's a simple message. It's easier to love than hate. I do believe music has healing potential, has power, even if it is only for a couple of minutes, like one song. And if I bring someone to tears, or the point of tears, or warm their hearts, these are tough times. Here is Bert Bachrach himself speaking of the song he co-wrote with lyricist Ruby Perez. I'm not counting, but I think it probably works out to be like every week there's another shooting. And we can't let ourselves get numb to this fact and just kind of get used to it, get used to a shooting at any time, but averaging once a week in our schools. So I'm asking for your support and your help to align yourself 
and trying to affect the change, bring a change. We can't stay like this any longer. Very glad to have written this song. Live to see another day. If you can warm some hearts, make you feel something. I think that's what Rudy and I are really trying to do, is make you feel something. Young kids shouldn't go to school in this fear of and doing drills in school where they're not an earthquake drill, it's hide under the desk drill in case there's an active shooter. I don't want to hear one person ever say again thoughts and prayers with it's not what doesn't matter. It doesn't count. What counts is a change. We've got to change. We've got to protect our kids. Violence got to stop. The killing's got to stop. Got to leave their kids alone. Stop hurting kids. So, thanks for listening, looking, and feeling, and supporting.
So we're going to do one more piece, and then we're uh, going to <clears throat> turn this over to y'all, because there's way more songs that we need to pay tribute to, and some of them you know greatly. So we're going to do an old-fashioned sing-along. <laughs> I'm giving you this much notice. We've already locked the doors, so you can't leave. <laughs> and we'll put the words up on the screen. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Truth be known, many of you know these those songs on the on the sing-along better than these folks do. I got a few geese in here. I got <laughs> know these. He knows all these songs. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So we're gonna do a song that I suspect you either know or you certainly have heard. Uh, Bert and his, at the time, wife, Carol Bayer Sager, wrote That's What Friends Are For in 1982 for the movie Night Shift. Any of you remember that movie? <laughs> okay, I don't. I don't. In 1985, Dion Warwick, Stevie Wonder, Elton John and Gladys Knight. Now there's a quartet of people for you. They recorded the song as a fundraiser for the American Foundation for AIDS Research. Proceeds from their recording raised well over a half million dollars for AIDS research. The recording won a Grammy that year for Song of the Year, and believe it or not, that was the first Grammy Award that Elton John ever won. I did not realize that. The song has become synonymous with graduation and commencement and moving up ceremonies for young people. Uh, so that's what friends are for.
Hugh, Ronan Moore, Sam Hood. What's your name? Carl. No. Kyle. No, this is Kale Martinus. All right. So, are y'all warmed up? Okay. Now you can go. You can go sit next to Grandma and Grandpa if you want to. You can do anything you want. <laughs> sit next to your folks. We won't fight. Sing it loud and proud. Sing it like you're in your car with the windows rolled up. Sing it like you're in the shower. Sing it like you're holding a brush in the mirror in your bedroom. Okay. Here we go. Fire when ready. Do you know the way to say my I've been away so long. I may go wrong and lose my way. Do you know the way to say my name? I'm going back to find some peace of mind in San Jose.
so I just did me some talking to the sun And I said I didn't like the way he got things done Sleeping on the job Those raindrops are falling on my head They keep falling But there's one Enjoy this lovely weather. We'll see you soon. <laughs>